Hi everybody. Um, a few weeks ago, I made some videos in which I discussed space and time. The first one was called How Some Aliens Travel, and the second one was called Time, The Complexities of Time. And during this second video, I mentioned that um, time is actually a series of single frames with a little gap in between each frame. And um, I said that if anybody was interested, I would, dis I would tell you what I know about this little gap in between each, each two frames of time. And a number of people have kindly asked me if I would do this. So this little video is called The, the Gap in Time. And it's about the little space between each two frames. Now, as is often the case, it's extremely complex. And although once you can start to understand it, it's not difficult to understand it, but it is complex. And you need to have a certain amount of sort of background knowledge in order to be able to comprehend what I'm going to talk about because I made a little list of a few odds and ends that I've got to mention and we've got to talk about God briefly and some and archangelic beings called the directors of life others that are called the directors of chaos we've got to talk about auras we've got to talk about all is one that all is the same and the fact that change is the only constant and we've also got to mention DNA. So it's quite a lot to talk about and make sense of. So let's start <clears throat> and we'll see how we get on, okay? Now, as I mentioned, time is not one single strip of time going from the past into the present, into the future. The best way to imagine it is as a cine film, if you were filming a scene somewhere with an old-fashioned camera with one of those rolls of film inside it, if you were to take the, the film out once you've recorded it and hold it up to the light, you would see a series of single frames with a little gap in between each frame. Well, now, life is actually very similar to that. Time is very similar to that. It's actually a series of single frames with this gap. And I mentioned that in this video that I made, which is called Time, the Complexity of Time. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, please go and have a look at that video and see how you get on with it. Now, this little gap in time between each two frames of time is of paramount importance because what happens during that moment here with that little gap is that let me let me back up just a shade and mention God because I said God comes into the scene and I'm not going to go into a big religious thing I just want to talk about the fact that God is not some old white man with a long white beard um, sitting on a cloud pouring hellfire down on us as if he can. God is quite simply the force that creates all life. God creates life. That's what God does. Right? Now, com right, imagine that God is up here. Just underneath him is a group of archangelic beings that we call the directors of life. And they take what I call the God particles, and they actually create all that we see around us. Everything in the entire galaxy, everything here on planet Earth, from the smallest grain of sand up to the planet Earth herself, everything on it, and out into space, all the moons and galaxies, and stars and planets, everything is created by these archangelic beings. 
obviously that's a positive thing. They're a positive force. And what they try to do is to create everything as perfect as they possibly can. Now, um, there's a problem with being perfect, that if these archangelic beings simply created they took the, the God particles, the life particles, and made things out of them that lived without dying in a physical sense, pretty soon the whole planet Earth would be full of creatures, humans, animals, plants, goodness knows what, and life would be unbearable. So there's a complementary, an opposite group of archangelic beings that we call the directors of chaos and their job is to destroy things now you might think of that as a negative thing but think of the look at them look at them as if they were the trash men of life we've got these archangelic beings called the directors of life that create objects and then we've got these other beings that when an object comes to the end of its natural life they get rid of it, and the whole <coughs> object is to keep life in balance. Good versus destruction, if you like, growth versus destruction. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, and it's very important that this balance takes place. Okay? Now, excuse me, oh, let me touch it to Hillary Clinton's. <coughs> excuse me. Now, the next thing we need to talk about are auras. Once again, I won't go into much detail because I've already spoken about them, but everything has a series of auras around it. Not just what we would call living things, humans, animals, insects and things, but even stones and the planet Earth herself has all got auras. Now, it is a fact of life that the higher the rate of vibration of an aura, the more easily it can be manipulated. So what happens is that during this moment, like, let's go back to look at this moment in time when everything, what, well, this, this gap in time. What happens is that you get a picture, a moment in time, and another one, a moment in time, shortly after. But in between, there's this little gap during which, and this is the important point, during which everything in the whole galaxy is destroyed, gone, as it was before what they call the Big Bang. There is nothing, absolutely nothing. Okay, The, the, um, the directors of life destroy everything quite how they do it, I don't know, but they do. So you get a picture, nothing, a picture, nothing, a picture, nothing, and so on, on, and on, and on. Now, when we have a picture, that, that's life going, doing its thing, okay, the archangelic beings look at what's going on in the in the whole galaxy, but just let's stick to our planet Earth. They would look at planet Earth and they would say, oh, there's a fault here with, with this creature or this group of creatures and we need to do something about it because if we don't, they're going to become sick and, and die out because one of something I forgot to mention, that change is the only constant Time doesn't exist as we know it, but change does exist. And the whole galaxy and the planet Earth and everything is constantly changing with every microsecond. So the directors of life need to keep changing things in order for life to change in relationship to the planet Earth and to keep its balance. Can you understand that? Now, this change involves altering DNA, the DNA of everything that exists, because as I mentioned, everything is not only alive, but everything has, which I sort of forgot to mention, everything has DNA. Even a stone has DNA. Okay, scientists may not be able to measure it at the moment, but 
it, it does. Everything is the same, so everything's got DNA. Now, as I went, mentioned earlier, it's a fact of life that the higher the vibration of an aura, etc., the easier it is for these directors of life to manipulate the DNA that's contained in each aura of everything uh, and send, send the altered DNA down. So if they locate a problem with any insect, plant, whatever it might be, they, during the, when, when uh, this gap, when, this is where it's getting a bit difficult because there's so many things to try and explain. As I mentioned, this, um, there's this gap in time when everything disappears. Now, obviously, if everything's disappeared and nothing exists, the, the directors of life have got nothing to work with. But having previously select, uh, noticed that there was a problem with the DNA of some creature or whatever, and it was heading towards destruction, they take, they select that creature, and in the next frame when it comes up, they, go, they take the DNA at the very highest level, they alter the DNA, so it comes down and down and down and finishes up in the physical body of whatever it might be. A, a snail, or I don't know, an insect, a, an animal, a person, a whole group of animals, it could, of, of, of creatures it could apply to. They alter the DNA of that in the hopes that it's, it's going to go back on the rise towards perfection as opposed of the descent down into corruption and, and disappear and so on. So, what happened... And, I've not explained it terribly well, but it is very, very difficult to sort of get my head to try and make it in a sensible manner. But what happens is you get a frame of time in which the directors of life locate a problem. Life is destroyed at that point. They won't wipe the slate clean. Then... But what they do do, what, during that moment in time when nothing exists, the directors of life retain in their mind the concept of what they're trying to push things towards, the perfection that they're trying to push things towards. And they, um, they keep that in their mind. mind uh, and when the next frame is ready to come into operation, reality... They alter the DNA of what they want to alter and clack. And you, you get the next frame of time with a slightly altered DNA. Now, there's another aspect of this, which I didn't mention, but I, I need to, is that all is one and all is the same. So what that means is that if the directors of life locate a problem in one area, of life, and they alter the DNA in that, er that area, that creature, whatever, they need to alter the DNA of every other thing in the whole galaxy to keep it all in balance, because all is one. Now, that, once again, is very difficult to understand. <laughs> Having located a problem, they need to alter the DNA of everything in this micro, micro, microsecond in order to keep life in balance. But what they do is while there is a f this moment of this snapshot of time, the, the archangels, the directors of life, locate a problem. They destroy all the, of life in order to give them a clean slate to work with themselves, a clean slate to work with, and then they recreate the whole thing with slightly altered DNA, then they, they go on to the next frame and clack, there's this gap, and they um, destroy everything once again to give themselves a clean slate to work with, and they reproduce it once again with a slightly altered DNA. Now, I don't know if you can understand what I'm saying, that things are being created, destroyed, created, destroyed, created, destroyed, and each time it's recreated, the DNA of the next frame is slightly altered, everything slightly altered, 
compared to what it was in the previous frame of time. Okay? Now, tell me what you think. If you can't understand it, I'll try and make a, a, another video that has a better, better go at it because it's really not that easy to explain. But do your best. I've done my best. Okay, I'll speak to you again another day on another topic. Okay, bye.